Hey, this is Kevin Carr, CEO of Pro to CEO. Today, I'm coming back with part two of Deion Sanders' amazing transitions, the five tips he taught us on how to advance at work and life that you can do right now. That's right, right now. I told you five things. Be good and excellent at the role you hire. Lead by example, like a CEO. Grow other people, be innovative, and have a growth mindset. Those are the five things. If you didn't check it out, go back and check it out. They lay the foundation of what I'm going to talk about now. Now I wanna apply it to you by some of the things that I did on my way up from a sort of graduate assistant all the way to a vice president of MBA and MBA Development League to now being the CEO of my own company, Pro to CEO. So here you go, number one. When you're brought in, and I talked about being good and excellent in your role, that's number one, you have to understand what you're being hired for. That job description is serious business, and a lot of times we get away from that because we get in and we want to be Superman. We got that S on our chest. We want to just save the day. We see so many things, so many problems we can make a name for ourselves with, but we often forget fundamentally what we were hired for, and employers whether you're a coach like Deion Sanders or someone you work for in your middle or low or high in the company, they want you to be good and they want you to excel at the role that you were hired for. Deion Sanders was a coach. He did a great job and he excelled. When I first started in a first job, I was hired as an athletic academic advisor for athletes. My job was to work with track call track, golf, tennis, and cross country. I didn't get to work with the big guys, football and basketball first. I wanted to, I kept saying, hey man, I'm good at this. I understand sports from a football and basketball perspective. I'm from that background. I went to school, I worked my way through undergrad and graduate school. I can help those student athletes. I'm, uh, I relate and identify more, but that's not what they hired me to do. If you're listening, they said, Track, tennis, golf, cross country. That's your lane. Understand that because that's what they wanted me to get good at. And I understood that finally when my boss said this, I'll never forget this. When I kept trying to aspire to get in the basketball and football and all these other sports, he said, hey, man, I didn't hire you to do that. He said, grow where you're planted. I hired you to do this first. And if you master this, then I can increase your territory. And when I understood that, that helped me be very, very good uh, at the role that they hired me for. So listen, be good and excellent at the role is the first thing. Deion Sanders do that, you can too. Understand your role, be good at it, tackle that first and everything in it. And then you can begin to do other things if your environment lends itself to that. If it's one of those jobs where you just do what you do, do that with excellence, let them see your light shine. Be strategic, be on time, be professional, be a good teammate, be all the things that they want you to do and then something. And then I believe you can have a breakthrough. So that's number one. Number two is, and this is important, lead by example. Really, really get into that role. When I talk about this, I'm talking to you in a sense of, we saw Gian Sanders lead like no one else, no one no recent day coach we've seen kind of do as much to connect with his players and do the things that kind of were green, sort of sort of grassroots, down to earth. They were very different than what we've seen traditional coaches do. He he led by example. He did things that he thought were re really good for his players, and he talked to them about it and talked them through it and said, this is why I'm doing this, and this is why I'm doing it for myself. I'm not asking you to do things I haven't done for myself. You look at my track record as a player all the way to a coach, to a professional and now leading this team. This is what I'm asking you to do. He led by example. I'm saying when I was starting my um, trajectory into developing programs as a programmer for life skills and developing athletes, before I got to the NBA, I had to be a leader in my field. Every school I worked at, Florida State, Michigan State, we got awards in that specific area. We were a top academic awards, uh, academic athletic advising program at one school. And then I innovated a little bit more and got into another space and became a leader like 
for my profession at the time, we won the Division I Athletic Director's Award for Life Skills Programming. My pro program became one of the top programs, if not the program, when I was doing that and brought a claim to the position because I grabbed that opportunity and I decided I wanted to lead it. I went out and got as much help as I could. I went on campus, I went in the community, I raised money. We did things that people weren't doing. It just really signified that I was a leader in that space and no other honor distinguished me more than being a leader than being honored by all Division One athletic directors at the time for being one of the best programs in the nation. I led by example. And that motivated a lot of people to do similar programs around the country. I even had someone want a license for the program that I did. That hadn't, that hadn't been done uh, at the time before people were calling other schools to get a license and do the exact program on their campus. I'm telling you, that's the kind of example and leadership running like a CEO. I wasn't the athletic director, but I ran my role. I ran my position. I ran my um, department by example and I led in my industry and became known as a top person and leader in that. So do that, make sure you understand, lead by example. Number three, grow others. Man, you have to have vision and you have to inspire is what I'm saying. When you're in a role, you saw Miss, when, when you saw Deion Sanders, you knew immediately that he was inspiring. I mean, he was motivating. He was full of energy. He was really believable. He leaned on his faith. He leaned on his experience. He leaned on examples. He brought in other people. He really decided to take what he knew and grow other people. And that was really, really critical. When I began my trajectory into coming up, I always believed in developing good teams of people. I can only be good as the people around me. And I really took that to heart. So every stop I got, I was able to latch on to graduate students or emerging young people who wanted to get into the profession and grow them and grow them with my own story, coming as a first generation person, being someone who's never, this position has never seen before. This was a brand new role I was doing. I was saying, I'm going to take this role and really innovate it. And people believed me and they joined me. And because they believed me and believed in what I was doing, together we were all able to come up. And that was the point. I was able to help many departments across the campus grow their brand and grow their department and grow their reputation and grow their experiences because there wasn't many much interaction between sports and other academic departments. I was really a visionary about what I wanted to do for student athletes. I wanted to change the narrative of why people, um, why athletes need support. This was way back th then before all these other support things were happening. We were really trying to do something. I was really inspired by my own brother not making it. And I really tried to inspire others by saying, this can be done. This needs to be done. I need you to help me. And in turn, we can help other people and I can help your department by creating relationships. All of that was significant showing not just me wanting to help myself, but to help others. And I'm saying, in order to get people to get behind you, you have to tell them the vision. You have to tell them what your end goal is and what you want to do. And when you're in your role, even if it's a beginning role, say my role as an intern, my role as a coordinator or assistant, um, assistant is to one day be in this position and then your role is to really tell them what your end goal is and hopefully you inspire someone who wants to help you and mentor you and bring you up all right so that's number three grow others the fourth one is bring innovation and what i mean by that is Deion sanders did things that you just didn't see a coach do he was innovative because he brought in content to his coaching. Most coaches don't want you to see that much. He peeled back the curtain. He let us see. He was very authentic, genuine. He's still doing it now. His transition into his new role, we're seeing it unfold in front of our eyes like must-see TV. He innovated this new lane of 
coaches being more an open book and being able to tell people and show people what it is that they do and how they do and how they motivate it to motivate today's players this is exciting this is different it's different in a way like no other we've seen and he brings all those other things about him his charisma his style his history of being successful you know that when you see him he walks the talk and talks the walk and he backs it up. And now you see it in the coaching lane. He did it at Jackson State. Can he do it again? I believe he can and I believe he will in time. This is something that was innovative for us. So what can you do? And what I can say I did was I decided to, um, in my positions, really study how to be different about athletes and transitions and transitions. So I decided to focus on making sure athletes knew that they are the CEO of their lives. They are the CEO of whatever they're doing uh, as athletes. Certainly they own the court, own the football field, own the position that they are, but also you can own and manage and lead and develop in other industries. That was different. That conversation about being a CEO of multiple things and using your athlete status to create equity for you and your relationships with people. You as an athlete, I began to talk to them and tell them that you have um, the ability to influence, you have the ability to have great access, you have exposure to great things, you have great social media influence. If you're doing the right thing, all of these things are there to you. And when I coach my clients, they really like that and believe that. And that's something that I will tell you that allowed me to really be good and innovate in the lane. Now, Pro to CEO, we've been around for a long time. We've been in existence. And a lot of people are looking um, and say, man, this, uh, what you were doing was ahead of its time. And now you're in a great position. And I really do believe that we are and we're continuing to make strides and I'm going to continue to innovate. I'm not stopping, but I'm telling you that like Deion Sanders, you have to innovate your position. So wherever you are, even if you're low on the totem pole, what can you bring that that organization isn't doing? What can you add value to that can help the organization come up? I remember working for the G League, for the NBA. Nobody wanted to work on that property. And I believe that it was going to, you know, hit one day that it was going to be very successful. So I stayed with it. And I moved to another part of the country for that business, then moved back to keep building it. And then we began to get traction when we changed ways in which owners own teams and players getting paid more and doing more of the relationship between NBA teams owning those teams. That became to be like it wasn't being done. We had to innovate all the time, change and really adjust. And it finally broke uh, us free. And we had a major breakthrough with every NBA team wanting to own their own G League team. And to this day, that innovation has really helped advance um, players in the NBA going up to, excuse me, players in the G League going up to the NBA. So innovate, innovate, innovate. And the last and final one is growth mindset. Moving up, moving others up. You know, when you do uh, and get in roles, certainly you can stay there and continue to innovate while you're there, meaning, excuse me, continue to grow while you're there. That's important. Sometimes you don't have to always leave a situation to grow. You can be at a department at one level and you keep advancing. I'm reminded by a gentleman I met just recently. He's a, a, a GM of an NBA team. He started as an intern, literally as an intern, and now he's the GM of an NBA team. So you don't have to leave, but what did he have? What did he do? He had a growth mindset. He didn't see himself just as an intern, like Deion said. He didn't see him just as a football player. He didn't see himself as that. He moved from that to baseball player. And he did multiple other sports as well. Track, if you didn't know, look up his track um, accomplishments. He's an amazing uh, three-sport athlete, maybe even four or five. Then from there, he moved into, after his elite careers in baseball and football, he moved into coaching, he moved into commentating. And then he really solidified himself in coaching in the last five or six years and has just done amazing work and continues to innovate and grow and develop. I'm saying the same thing, just like that. 
intern who became a GM, you have to see where you are and decide where you want to go, whether you stay with that organization or you move around. I moved around. I worked at two Power Five school conferences. Then I worked for a startup. And then I went back into sports with the NBA and moved up um, not only with the minor league, but moved into the major leagues with the NBA. And then I innovated and kept growing. And I got positions in both leagues and became the first vice president of social responsibility for the NBA and for the NBA Development League. I kept growing. Even when I started at the NBA, I was with the minor league and I kept growing over the almost 14 seasons to become a vice president. So I not only did that for myself, but I helped bring people along. And I'm so happy to see that some of the people that used to work uh, alongside with, they're now leading departments along the way at the college, uh, at the college level. They're now ADs. I talked to a gentleman, we were side by side at the time when we first started out. Remember back in the number one that I talked about being good, he was an advisor. And now he's the athletic director of a major uh, college um, program, D1 program. So people, if you decide and lock in, and then if you decide you want what it is in your career, these tips, these things, especially this last, this last one, a growth mindset, it can be yours, but you have to decide how you want it to go. And you have to do all these things. So let's rewind. Number one, be good at your role. All right. Be excellent at it. Number two, lead by example. Be like a CEO. Innov you know, really innovate in your space. Like be great at leading in your role. Number three, grow others. Grow other people, not just yourself. Grow, inspire, have vision for yourself, but also to do others. Number four, bring innovation. Innovate, innovate, innovate. Be, uh, have that slight little thing about you that's different than anyone else to really be innovative and bring that and stay with things sometimes that other people will get off and figure out how to innovate with that. And then the last one is have a growth mindset. Be willing to take the path of growing incrementally, step by step, going up every step of the way. We're so happy to see Mr. Sanders have the success that he had, but I'm looking forward to hearing from some of you about your success after reaching whatever levels you're trying to get to. These five tips, I believe, from watching Deion Sanders' amazing transition, these five things can help you advance and work in life right now, right now. I'm telling you, I gave you some of my examples. You're watching his. Now you get to work. Now, if you have some questions, drop them in the comments. I'll be glad to maybe advance uh, conversations. You can go to protoceo.com and contact us, but leave us some questions. Maybe I can definitely answer them and start conversations with other videos on this. This is good work. This is hard work. But if you do uh, really good work and get to the great work and strive for excellence, you too can have the advancement and work and life that you're looking for. I'm happy to um, be able to bring this to you. And I hope it's helpful and gives you some insight on practical things that you can do. It's great to watch other people do things, but you can do it too. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and drop some questions in the comments and keep following. Take care, be well. This is Kevin Carr, CEO of Pro2CO. Be well.